I'm a guest at home. That means hello everyone in Uzbek. Uh, I'm Yoku, table tennis player and coach here in Minnesota. This is my second vlog on table tennis at home. Today we'll be going over if you have a table tennis table and a robot, what kind of trainings you can do while you're staying at home. If you don't have a table or robot, make sure to check out my first video uh, in the description below. So let's get started! Woo! I don't have my shoes on! Now this trick is for my niece Antalya. Alright, now we're ready! Let's get started! So let's say you decided to have table tennis training session with robot at home and you don't know how to organize it. So this is my recommendation on how you can plan it. So first I think uh, you can start with warm up. So I'll write down number one here. We want to make sure we have a good warm up session. Warm up 20 minutes total. And it can be your it it can start with as your forehand drive and then slowly transitioning to forehand topspin. So maybe spend about three minutes for forehand drive and then seven minutes for forehand topspin. Then transition to your backhand. Uh, spend about three minutes for the backhand drive and then seven minutes about for backhand topspin. That would be the first stage to start your training session, just the way you do with your training partner. Number two, uh, let me write down, so this one is the pattern drills, so you want to make sure you get some uh, drills that uh, you know or you like or the ones that uh, you can find even in the robot settings. So number two, pattern drills. In my example, I use Falkenberg, so one or two pattern drills. It can be, I'll write down Falkenberg, or it can be one on one, or two two, or two backhand, one forehand, from backhand uh, corner starting. Anything you can find on your robot uh, setup, or you can even, if your robot allows you, you can also change it to the drill you want. But uh, the point is you want to make sure to get one or two pattern drills where you can work on your fundamentals to develop your technique, to develop your footwork. Once you finish your pattern drills, uh, number three is a service drill. I will write down here, service drill. Okay, service drill, what does that mean? If your robot lets you do that, uh, you can set up your robot to serving different side spin, under spin, side top spin serves, so you can return them. Uh, but if you have an advanced robot where you can follow up with what the return will be like and program your own drill. For example, I was doing a forehand flick and follow up 
kind of a slow return of a topspin ball for me where I can counter a little bit hard so I do forehand loop uh, twice and then I set up for the backhand loop so I imagine my opponent uh, blocking there and I am uh, attacking uh, in the game The next one, as an example, you can take a look uh, where I'm returning backhand side spin, side underspin serve with a short drop shot push and I'm getting back from my opponent's supposedly uh, long backhand push to my backhand side and I'm, I'm trying to work on my third ball attack to make sure that I'm landing the ball on the table and executing my third ball attack. So service drills are uh, very helpful for you uh, to practice at home where you don't have anybody to serve to you and you can set up a uh, scenario of the game, how it might turn around if you return to their forehand, maybe they'll attack and maybe you end up blocking or if you drop shot short, maybe they'll push you back. So you can get creative about it and change it any ways you want. Okay, so now number four, once uh, you do your warm-up, your pattern drills, some service drills, of course you'll get to the point where uh, things like now you know a lot of them where the ball is landing. So number four will be randomness. So let me write down randomness. What do I mean by this? Uh, if you put your robot into a random mode where it will be shooting at you, maybe you can first practice a blocking shots where, uh, where in this video I'm showing how I'm trying to block the balls when I set up the robot for the highest speed and spin to attack at me. So I'm imagining my opponent is doing lots of loops and I'm trying just to block them back and make them on the table. Once you practice somebody like as if your opponent attacking randomly, uh, you can also set up your robot to a lower top spin speed so that it will be a scenario where you're the one who is attacking and it should also be random. Most of the time in the game the ball lands randomly so this could be a good experience for you uh, to try to execute and stay on the table to test your reaction and to follow how the robot changes the position for you and staying consistent on attacking your balls and making them on the table. Randomness helps you also stay uh, more interested in the training with the robot and helps you not to get bored from it. It helped me a lot. Also, this is just a recommendation of how to organize your training session. So if you get like a one somewhat idea of how you can plan it, next you can just uh, change the drills. You can practice lob smashing maybe. You can also move, take out your robot and move it behind the table further away from the table so you can practice like uh, top spin balls that are counter looping against them and or just even under spin balls as if somebody a chopper is chopping to you so this all uh, up to your creativity I hope this video was helpful for you to figure out how to organize your table tennis training session with robot 
If you have any other ideas on how you organize your training sessions with robot, please leave a comment below and uh, have fun training with robot. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.